so like if you have a computer so just uh, example like if you want if you open your computer you want to access some youtube videos or you want to get some content of the youtube so you just you you need a internet connection with your service provider so mm-hmm. you will just send one packet out like uh, what information you need means which content you are looking for is it some uh, means some particular videos uh, music video or is it uh, some study video or something you want to open so that content you will send it so you, internet will not able to open it it will just look into the packet ip address and just forward it to the destination site so once destination receive that packet so it will look into the what content you are looking for and then it will give you a reply back so okay. this is only uh, like explaining uh, here what server and client but in detail like how it will attach ip address and how, what is the lookup it do so that we will cover in step by step process mm-hmm. okay. okay so now we have a switches like let's consider example in a switch when we have a pc1 pc2 pc3 is connected with the same switch now pc1 want to exchange some information with pc2 pc3 and if there are many more pc also so mm-hmm. in a, in this scenario instead of going on each person does connect with the cat cable with uh, means one to one so it will be very tedious process it not even a scalable process so instead yeah. of that what we can do we can just connect one switch for normally every single switch have normally 24 ports minimum this many ports will come with the switch sometimes some nowadays vendors are coming with some small switches also as per the requirement coming from the customer side so uh, accordingly according to your requirement means you can consider there are 24 ports already available if you need more so you can connect two switch accordingly but switch will use within a lan network also within a lan network only so like so we can create a pair like we can same model yeah uh, so yes. we'll have 48 switches if we pair them uh, and create a uh, uh, you know pair of it. yeah you can do the connection also let's say for example uh, this uh, switch one so let's say this has 24 ports only but you have let's say 50 uh, clients are there but mm-hmm. okay so you're not able to serve that purpose so what you will do you, you can connect 23 ports with the pcs and 24th port you can connect with other switch okay okay so once that port will be get connected with the other switch so what will happen now that switch also become part of this main switch right so mm-hmm. now whatever packet will come from pc1 it will send to pc2 it will send to pc3 and it will also send to that uh, second switch also second because it's a normal property of the switch it will just broadcast the packet whatever it mm-hmm. receive it will broadcast the packet but uh, just a question on that so uh, because it becomes a pair um when doing any stack uh, upgrade or something uh, both the switches will go down one cannot be on standby right or it will be uh, uh, it will not be a failover it okay. cannot be considered as a failover switch is it is it okay uh, so you are saying you are talking about that stacking of that switch right yes yeah uh, so that is something different that concept is some, that is something let's okay. say you have a physically two switch but mm-hmm. you are making it as a virtual switch it means virtually you are considering it as a single switch only single so in switch, that yeah. case that is yeah that is something different because there are some particular model number of cisco only support that it's not like all cisco oh. model will support it so and there will be one step one particular port they give uh, in that case so that port will be connected between the two switch and then it will consider like these are physically two boxes but two virtually boxes, we consider uh, as a single box so that is okay. a different scenario it kind of a data center scenarios we normally okay. use there uh, but i am talking about a scenario when let's say you have some requirement like uh, you need multi you need to uh, multiple clients to serve right. one from one particular switch but so, in that case of stacking it will not it will be a scenario like let's say there's a single physical switch i mean sorry single virtual switch but there are multiple uh, but that whole switch will work as a one device only but okay. in this case second switch can work as a separate device also okay okay so means let's say you want this packet that is fine but let's say there is one more 
client uh, come from that switch side and you want that switch also work for that particular client I means we will do that configuration how vlan will come into picture so okay. all that are but that will work in that case means that switch can work individually also but you want this packet also from pc1 to go to other switch also other so switch. that thing okay. i'm explaining like we can connect okay. the, uh, from the one of the port I, we can use from this switch and connect it with the other side of the switch then it will again broadcast that thing okay and this scenario is useful when when let's say we have more clients than the number of ports available on the switch yeah so correct means you, you need right. Uh, yeah right means let's say you need more uh, you have a more clients or you have some uh, connectivity something like that you need a switch there because i told you na router is more uh, expensive as, as compared to switch so oh. let's say consider a scenario a last mile scenario let's say you have a one router is there at your one of the main location for example we consider uh, delhi location you have a router now your client is sitting somewhere in let's say punjab okay let's consider mm-hmm. there there you have a client now you want to send your traffic from the your delhi router towards the punjab router so okay. you you can have one fiber connection there that fiber will go to the, your switch now your now in punjab location let's say you have a multiple client you don't have a single client there so instead okay. of connecting one more router in between you will consider let's connect one switch means accordingly you need to check the distance and everything so if mm-hmm. you can connect one switch and that switch can serve some of the client in that location and some clients in some other location of the punjab also it will be served so we can we preserve our router in that case of scenario but oh, if it okay. is so required with a single router now we can yeah. uh, connect these two different uh, sites uh, right correct so we can do that thing okay okay yeah okay okay so let's do one more okay so this is the india branch so we will explain like now a scenario when two branches want to communicate with each other right if new york branch want to communicate with india branch they want some content from the let's say pc1 want some content from the server one so here we have a switch so switch will work only within the lan network but we okay. want something outside the lan network right so in that case we need a router and it doesn't mean like it should be in a two different location it can be like in a same location but uh, you want uh, let's say you want pc1 pc2 pc3 uh, let's say these all are in same location now you want pc1 pc2 pc3 having some content which should not be shared with the india branch for example this is the name of the india branch but it's all in the same location okay, okay. so what will happen pc1 will send some traffic to this node it will go to when switch will send this to pc2 pc3 and towards the router also but router will see whether the destination for which we are sending the traffic is it okay means it's pc1 is it okay to send the traffic out or not so router will take that decision I mean, we will see how it will take the decision so it will not just do a broadcast as switch will do okay okay it will not so it do a norm sorry okay so it will not send that packet or a network traffic towards the india branch because uh, uh, you know even though it's the same site it's one site uh, but it won't send that data uh, it will uh, you know control itself ha right and, means uh, like you can consider a scenario let's say uh, i will give you a scenario so let's say a, you have one isp big, big isp you have okay so that isp will have a multiple customers correct right. uh, there will be no single customer like we are let's say you also take one connection from the isp i also take one connection third person also take a connection right now you send some traffic let's say you want to communicate with me right so you will communicate to a internet service provider right so you send a traffic out uh, from your device to towards the switch switch will send it to the to the router now router will not just simply broadcast it to the all the customer which they have a connection right because right. isp have a multiple customer so in right. that case of scenario what router will do it will just look into the ip address like for whom it you need to send a traffic so it will look into that ip address uh, scenario we will see like how this ip address we gave and how it will calculate that ip address so it will look into that ip address information and then it will send the traffic to me only because it will understand this traffic is coming for me it will not coming for the other clients so like that it will send the traffic out okay so means router you can consider like switch will do a broadcast so it's a single broadcast domain we normally say and router we have a multiple broadcast domain it will not just simply broadcast a packet out okay, okay. 
okay so that's the reason we normally you see this line like switch will have a single broadcast domain and router will have a multiple broadcast domain because router will uh, not broadcast a packet or whatever it receive it will look into the packet address its ip addresses and then it will send it out same way switch will also do the same thing it I means it will receive a packet will look into the packet but it will just broadcast it if it, it will understand broadcast, the yeah. packet yeah it so there is no filtering it. in it like it will not basically it will not filter uh, the packet it will just broadcast it but yeah it will just broadcast it for now you can think like that but we will uh, see like how it will get modified or how we can do a configuration to protect it from getting broadcast we are talking about a normal l2 switch with a default configuration so once okay. we have a configuration then we will see like how we can prevent it from getting a broadcast okay so that will be some later part we will do one minute to add construct okay yeah so router like i am saying having a fewer network uh, interface so like i told you switch will have normally 24 uh, normally they have even sometimes it may have 48 or some more also but in routers we normally don't have this many number of ports we have a lesser number of ports as compared to switch okay okay so that's why uh, we use more often a switch in a network but uh, routers also we need it whenever we need to communicate between the two LAN networks okay so then we have why we need a routers whenever we need a connection uh, means connectivity between the two different LAN connections so there we use the routers Got okay so then and, we and talk normally about the uh, normally like uh, in in a scenario where let's say it's fairly uh, a big company like not not a big company let's say if it's a normal you know uh, company they have uh, different branches but they are all in uh, within let's say new delhi right uh, so one is in north delhi one is in south delhi uh, you know east west so let's say four locations uh, in that scenario all the uh, will it be uh, in that case are they going to use router or they're going to use uh, switch uh, you know in that case only like obviously they're going to use switch for the uh, LAN connections but uh, communicating between these uh, you know four sites will there be a single router uh, you know that that can handle uh, the traffic uh, means uh, let's go by a scenario you are saying you have a four different location right Four different location uh, in same let's say let's say New Delhi we have say uh, in New Delhi we have four uh, different buildings uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, east west north south uh, so between that if you have to uh, share some data uh, you know will will each site have a router or it will be just one router somewhere in one of the main sites and then it will route the traffic. Okay, so it's like if if a scenario will be like let's say you have a single router and you want to share information with all the four sites, right? Yeah. So depend on the distance. For first thing is about the distance, like how the distance is. So if we are cons we do not consider the distance here, we just consider it will all be supported by the all the devices. So we normally right. say we use the switch there. Means we have a single router. Then router will have a multiple switch so what will happen in that case let's say each side want to communicate with all the side in the first case so it will just simply right. send a traffic to the uh, switch switch will uh, see the packet it will just simply broadcast the traffic right. to the towards the router and router will then look into the packet and it will just see uh, where it need to send so if it need to send to all the devices so it will again need look into the which IP address you want to send first so accordingly it will send one by one to all the three devices but it will also help us in a scenario when a case let's say uh, you don't want to send to all the device but one particular location only you want to send right so in that case you your switch will receive a packet it will just broadcast it to the router router will look into the ip address and then it will say okay i i will not broadcast it to all the address i will just send it to one single location right. okay so that will be helpful yes Okay, so that uh, scenario will happen. But normally, what we do in the in this case, we don't go to towards the L3 layer. Means we don't go towards the L2 layer. Uh, whenever we need to send the traffic to all the devices, we just send the traffic to switch, and we will make connection between the switches also, so that my I, my router did not need to send one by one packet to all. It will just simply send through a switch to all the devices. Okay. 
okay so means obviously there will be like uh, you know in india geography is very complicated so we need to go we need to consider that part also like uh, if fiber is fiber connection is possible in that case or not so like that thing we need to do okay okay so that part we have to make into consideration otherwise for the network plan from network planning point of view we do something like we create a ring you can consider mm-hmm. let's say there is one switch ring then we have a router ring so once we have a connection we will send it to uh, means over a uh, switch switch will consider whether it need to send to the ring and then it will broadcast to the, all the clients in that ring if it is okay. not possible then it will be sent to the router and router will consider to broadcast it broadcast it. okay well not broadcast it mean i mean it will send it to unicastly to one one to one all the clients uh, i mean it will uh, router will uh, share it with uh, rather than sending one by one it will uh, share it with <laughs> everyone all the all the devices yeah it will dev- means you have a ring let's say now your packet will come from switch towards the router right now router will look into the packet it will see for which destination this packet came from right. uh, this packet came for so then it will send the traffic towards the that cl- client means that particular router or switch with whatever the connection we have okay okay so like that it will go for the packet transfer so this is now we have a firewall so last uh, like from the security purpose only we use the firewall so let's say you have a connection you have some private network so in that case you don't want your out- outside person to come inside a network or you, you are sharing some information in a public domain but you want that public domain information to remain protected so we use the firewall here so means if you any traffic will come from the internet towards your private network so you first filter it out in in this in this scenario it will filter it out using the ingress side only whenever it is coming out coming in you just simply filter it out whether you will going to accept it or not according to the again in this case it will depend on the basis of your ip address only you will see whether this ip address is correct or not or is it a legitimate ip address or not uh, in your network then only you will accept it otherwise you will just uh, uh, filter it out in that case okay okay so may firewall is nothing it we just need a create a policy there or we say normally a rules there so what policy will do it will just verify if the traffic is coming from particular source or particular destination then only have to allow it if it is not from this particular for this particular uh, destination or from this particular source then it will just simply drop the traffic and it can be on the basis of port numbers also like uh, let's say you want uh, for example in co- companies nowadays what they do they open some particular site but they keep some sites closed there right so what they do actually they are filtering it out on the basis of port numbers like you want particular source and destination ip address may be same but if like traffic HTTP, coming from this https port 443 yeah, something like that <laughs> yeah for okay. https we have 443 and for http we have 80 80 so, so right yeah let's say you want to keep https only because it is we consider that as a more secure traffic yes. but any traffic coming from http we don't want that traffic in my private network so you just simply block the port number 80 you don't want to block the whole ip address you want you know, means uh, instead of blocking the whole ip address because let's say even google you just open if you do this ns lookup of the google ip na mm-hmm. if i do google uh, ns lookup and if you do ns lookup because we are both in a different geographical location so both will get a different ip address so you will not able to block that many number of ip address so instead of that right. what do you do we just block the port number so if oh. we block the port number so any traffic will come from http so it will not allow in my local network so like that Right. so we will cover in a dns chapter why uh, we have a different uh, ip address for the let's say for example google site if you do now right now if you do the ns lookup if i do normally you will get a different ip address and i will get a different ip address and same for many other big sites you can consider yeah, right, like right. you youtube facebook so we will cover that thing in a dns topic like so, why we uh, search the firewall uh, like uh and my question because of my personal experience with my previous company uh coming from uh so in my previous company uh you know what they uh, they did was uh for internal communication or like internal 
there was a firewall which is obviously you know the we used to call external firewall and internal firewall so we had a firewall that was uh, internal for even like let's say pc1 uh, wants to connect to let's say server one uh, even at the same site uh, that let's say if i have to uh, do um, uh, you know smb connection or telnet uh, it will block the port so i had to open a request with our firewall team security team to open uh, the particular ports so is that also a common scenario like uh, you know i have seen that you know maybe other uh, companies also do that but my previous company for sure uh, they they did internal firewalls also like blocking the traffic because we used to do lab research so uh, the uh, scientific research so those lab devices or labs uh, which are which were on different vlan uh, they were blocked from any kind of rtp uh, you know ping and even like uh, uh, http uh, sorry uh, uh, telnet. You know, telnet telnet and all that yeah. so they did that yeah i mean it may be like company policy because like i told you na like you have configured a different vlan so vlan means you can say it's a virtual lan it means not a physically you have a different lan but it's a virtually you have a different lan so it's like you have a the like i give you example engineering department you have sales department so you can consider you have one engineering department uh, internally okay so i'm saying that yeah. let the uh, scenario in your organization you have a engineering department so with, where you have r and d 1 2 and 3 team but they don't want r and d 1 and 2 uh, to communicate with each other so they created right. a virtual lan right okay. but now instead of, because they also maybe have some router or something connection in, in between so that you can still send the traffic out if you get the destination ip address okay. so instead of blocking each source ip address they just block the port uh let's say some one of the port they maybe have blocked like if right. any traffic from this this side so it should not be communicated with the r&d 2 team so and something that, like they that is done on the firewall or they they it's done on the router so uh means it can be done on router also i know like juniper router support the port blocking it will support the port blocking and cisco also support the port, port blocking oh, oh, so means okay. uh, so it is like something let's say on the ingress interface you just need to configure it on the right interface only that is the right. main uh, key here so in ingress interface you need to apply that policy uh, like any traffic from this particular source address or this particular uh, port address is coming you need to just simply block that uh, Uh, block traffic there yeah. oh nice okay so, yeah. uh, so it can be done in that way also because i always used to think like you know why uh, firewall because firewall is uh, you know in my understanding firewall was for outside like i i used to configure firewall on the windows side uh, but it was you know uh, sometimes and it was not never even required on the on the server side so uh, mm. you know but, but like you mentioned now it makes me more clarity like uh, you know it can be done on the router side also that they can block yeah on router also. we can we have we have like uh, access list we call them on cisco or policies in juniper uh-huh. we can create so okay. with that policy or access list you can block the particular port and source address like that and they are all like G, uh, gui because i know polo we used to work on polo alto so it was gui based so these juniper uh, they are also like gui based or all command line that, that no no i think palo alto i am not aware but i think all devices earlier it's all a cli base but okay. now they are coming with the gui of all the device when this sdn network and we are moving towards more towards a software defined network so that's why this all converted towards a gui so it's like gui you are giving some commands but in background it's just converting into a cli format and then it will be sent to the device only so like that thing It's just a CLI for I think for Palo Alto maybe a same thing I didn't work on that device but for Cisco and Juniper I can say they have a GUI but that GUI is like inter means for the user for for you it's a GUI but in the background it is again converting that all thing into a command and send it to the router. So Cisco also has firewalls like Cisco also. Yeah. They have Juniper. their own firewall. Juniper has SRX. This all are main firewalls they have. Miss Cisco firewalls. I think they people don't have that much in the market. But uh, Juniper SRX is the very very common firewall in the market. Okay. Yeah. 
so cisco also have their firewalls but that are not re- very rapidly used there because cisco is more known for their routers or routers, their yeah. nexus uh, switches like that yeah, because here uh, palo alto is uh, uh, you know uh, in my company they they were all going with palo altos uh, you know recently yeah like that is I- also one of the very uh, i think market from market share point of view palo alto have a very good market share in the firewall perspective so like that means i'm saying like cisco and juniper are more into a router and switching side but uh, juniper also have their firewall like srx firewall so, so why we call it juniper why, why like is it a company like juniper is a company they used to make and then cisco bought it uh, they used to make routers or something no 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 they are two different company yeah and it's a means they are making the routers but they have the means you can say both are competitor to each other oh Jun- so juniper is not cisco okay no no it's a different it's a company oh, okay actually. i i thought okay. no no it means you can just say if cisco uh, is as, as a different I means they have their own router and switches but their right. cli is are the are later different nokia also okay. they are, so nokia also have their routers and switch but that cli also different but the working hmm. process, uh, process is just same for all the same companies. okay means router like i told you know, there are standards so router switches will work according to those standards only standards. only thing is your name or your configuration command will be just uh, different other a little bit different as it is yeah okay 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 so this is about this topic like firewall and what all uh, concept we have I means related to devices now means i just give you a brief if you can go through it once more time if you need then we can have a more discussion on this part but uh, this all topic like uh, how the communication we do why we need this uh, kind of setup we will have in the upcoming topics there okay okay so today we will start with the interface and cables like uh, connections we have means we have a router and switches then then we make a connection between them so why what type of connections we have means there are different type of cables again like uh, copper cable we have a fiber cable and what standards they follow in that case normally if you see there are some ports which support 100 mb some ports support 10 mb now i think 10 mb very rarely we get then we have a ports where which support 1 gb some ports support uh, 10 gb so like that we have a standards so for that so in this topic we cover that only so this one a picture of the uh, cisco switch so here you can see it has a 24 ports so, and you can just see the shape of this port this is something in the top we have a d or you can say something like that and in bottom also so this is this shape we normally have a port where we connect the rj45 uh, that socket so rj45 is very common socket maybe you have seen it also like this okay this this is rj45 socket so, so this is called rj45 so this is a switch diagram okay um, uh, from a cisco switch so where you have this 24 port and it has this rj45 but on top of it you can see it is written 10 100 1000 base t 1 to 24 port and port are auto mdx so this means like 10 to 100 and 1000 base t means this port from 1 to 24 can support 10 mb 100 mb and 1 gb capacity so uh, this many is supported for all the 1 to 24 ports so this much of the speed we can support from 1 to 24 and then it has auto md auto md we will cover in just few minutes what is the meaning of auto md but for now you can consider 10 100 base t if it is written so this means this po- this switch port from 1 to 24 can support this many speed only if you need more speed so accordingly you need to check the your device like is it is it supporting like let's say 10 gb 100 gb or not so like that thing so for for this device we have 10 100 1000 bsd only okay okay and it's a switch it's not a router it's a switch that's why it has 1 to 24 ports uh, numbers in this many ports are there and this port shape you can see it will be like it will be helpful like whenever you have a, some lab or you need to do uh, some connection in a physical lab uh, real world so you can see like this is a rj45 connection okay 
so rj45 is something look like this so means let's say you want to connect between two switches for example so from the uh, shape of the port you can understand you need which cable is it rj45 cable or is it a fiber cable unit so we will see how the fiber cable ports are look like but this is rj45 ports okay so okay so this is all called a ethernet cable I means these all are ethernet okay so these all cable follow the ethernet standards so why uh, so means whenever you have a connection so means whatever how the ethernet will work so that will be followed on this type so what is the ethernet it's a collection of network protocol so we will focus on cabling only in this case but we in the upcoming chapter we will see how the header of the ethernet will look like i mean that l2 layer here you have one switch and this is one of the uh, cable so like you want to connect this cable so this is something look like this you just need to look through the socket now we will see internally how this socket will be look like so there will be like eight you can say uh, just remember one thing whenever you send a traffic it will be in bits Okay. okay if you, if somebody ask you like how much is the traffic we normally say 10 gbps right then 10 gb and there will be small p and s like there so it's like 10 gigabits per second we are sending the traffic okay not gigabyte so, uh, not gigabyte gigabyte is like when we have want a bandwidth let's say you somebody ask you how much is the capacity of this port or how much is the bandwidth of this port so then you say the bandwidth of this port is like 100 gb means 100 gigabyte but okay. it's not per second thing it is like 100 gigabyte so normally difference is like whenever you have small b it's bits whenever you have capital b so it's byte so means if it is 10 gbps normally if you do if you have some router you do show interface for example and the name of the interface or uh, then you will see the speed will be mentioned something like let's say 1 or gbps for example so it will be small b in that case of scenario but it will be like small in that case it will be gigabit per second gigabit and uh, yeah if you configure some bandwidth let's say customer came to you and it say you have a 10 gig of port but i don't want 10 gig of capacity i want let's say 100 mb of traffic only i do, i want this much only to be reserved for me so in that case we call it a megabyte or let's say 100 megabyte like that it will be in byte format it will not be in bit format so like that so a means you have 8 bits that will be equal to 1 byte, byte. so it means if you are saying one byte so this means all these things are transferred in the same time at the same time 0 1 0 if you are saying bits so it will like first it is going 0 then 1 then 1 then 0 like that so means you can consider if you are saying one byte so it will something you are saying in a hor- uh, in this vertical direction it all 8 bit- bytes are 8 bits are sending if you are saying bits means bits per second i am sending so this is one by one this all bits are sending it out okay okay so so this is like that so if somebody ask you how much is the bandwidth so normally we say in the terms of byte if somebody ask you how much is the speed and then we say in the terms of bits it can bits. be gigabit mm. terabits it can be megabits so accordingly what is the capacity of that port got it okay so this is one thing so let's say like this is only i explained here if somebody is tra- sending a traffic so it will be in the bits because we want to send a traffic in a this direction we will not send some packet like this right so packet is just a, uh, in a router it is converted into a 0101 format so it will just send like this only so but we are sending it in the form of bits so it will be like go like this only so that's why traffic normally we speed we all say in a bits format is it called east west traffic or no east west uh, traffic means so like you said uh, it will go like uh, only on the right direction or uh, it won't go uh, towards no you can have a by you can have a by direction according to the okay. requirement but in this example we are showing it is going from one side to other side left, from the uh, r1 to r yeah this is one unit direction traffic we can consider oh, okay. but we can have a by direction means that's by why direction. you normally see port nowadays coming as a full duplex Full duplex means at the same oh. time it can transmit also, it can receive also. So that, But that it's, the it's up to meaning. the requirement. It, we can do uh, like uh, you know instead of two way, we can do one way also, right? But depending. Yeah, I mean, let's say you have a customer which is. on both the side but this customer only want to send a traffic and this want to receive 
so you okay. will have a unidirectional traffic in there but let's say both customer at the same time want to send they can also do that there will be no collision or something will happen but port capacity let's say this is 1 gb port for example 1 yeah. gigabyte gigabyte of ports okay so 1 gigabyte means in one direction only it is not like both if you will calculate and you say 500 mb plus 500 mb it's one gig it's not like that oh, 1 so gb means this side 1 gb and this side also 1 gb like the ingress so and both egress can both communicate so both can communicate uh, at the uh, speed of 1 uh, gb 1 gb 1 gigabit 1 yeah, gigabit okay per second uh, per second at the same time uh, if we at, if we configure it uh dual you know two way means right. yeah normally it is coming as a full duplex only yeah. we'll see how the duplex actually works now in just in few slides but if you have a full duplex port so we sh- it should work both as a transmit and receive both at the same time so if let's say somehow it is not working so you need to first thing you need to check your port settings is it a full duplex or half duplex or some error there so like that and it can be but on expert. the client side also it can also be on the switch side uh yeah also, right? uh, means if it is not a hub hub now normally we don't use a uh, hub nowadays but if it is a switch and router so they all support full duplex only hub is one of the device i don't know if anyone uses right now it only support half duplex okay only hub is one of the other devices only will only support uh, they all support full duplex okay. let's say somehow you want half duplex settings because of your network requirement so you we can change that setting but by by it will support both full duplex okay. and yeah standard means you can say in a network we normally recommend to use with a full duplex but sometimes network has such kind of design they need half duplex so you can consider that scenario but otherwise we normally support with a full duplex okay okay so like i mentioned this thing only speed is measured in bits per second not byte per second or it is always in bits so normally you see this kind of uh, in a show interface if you do so you will see like sm- something like this k b p s so normally if you have small b we consider it's a bits it, so if it, it is, is always k b p s the small yeah. like bits yeah means sometimes because of some because let's say somebody who is designing or develop from the developer side written like capital b also it will not give you any uh, error or something it will still traffic will still work but i will say it's a typo error or as per the standard it should be like small b got it so this is like a bits and let's say you want to convert into a unit so this is again just remember 1000 unit to multiply means we have smallest unit is bits then we have kilobits then megabits then gigabit then terabit so if you have th- means bits you want to convert from kilobits to bits it's 1000 if megabit to uh, kilobit then again 1000 but if megabit to again you need to go back to bit it again 1000 means if you want to from one step down always need to multiply with 1000 so like this you need to multiply okay so let's say for example smallest unit is bits right then you have kilobits then you have megabits then you have gigabits and then you have terabits okay so these all are unit now let's say you want to convert your kilobits to the bits so means you are going from kilobit to one step down right so you need to multiply 1000 Okay, so now say megabit to the bits. So how many step you are going down? You are going two steps down. Megabit to kilobit, kilobit to bits. So you need to multiply two times thousand, right? Same way, gigabit. How many steps we are going down? Gigabit to three. megabit, megabit to kilobit, and then bits. Three three, three steps, so, right? So three times. Okay. Like this, you need to you can remember, and it it is opposite. If you want to go bits uh, to other side to upside so it will like again you need to uh, divide by 1000 in that case means you have 1000 uh, let's say you have one bit you want to convert into 1000 so it is opposite just now it will be like one divided by 1000 in that case got it so you can remember something like this if you are going one step down so each time you have to multiply with 1000 there how if you go two steps down so two times 1000 three step three times 1000 like that okay If you want to go direct, let's say from one megabit to kilobit, so it again one step down, right? So it will yeah, be thousand so again. Thousand. Yeah. If you want to go from gigabit to kilobit, so again two steps down, so it will be again th- two times thousand, right? Yeah. Like this. Okay, so this is a Ethernet standard which are defined in 1983 by IEEE. So these standards we call it as A dot two, uh, sorry A dot two dot three. 
like that so i have a one chart so you can remember it from this chart uh, let me once again open a pointer so let's say you have a I 10 mb is uh, that uh, is it the uh, it's a standard uh, community yeah it's the standard community which will come up with all these standards like with is standard get approved by the ieee that will be considered by all these companies uh, they oh. they will only implement those uh, standards okay so means normally you heard about this rfcs right we study rfc and according to rfc these standards are there so these are our rfcs are means implemented by the ieee the ieee only uh, approve those so rfc is nothing it's just a document so let's say if i want to uh, means today let's say i want to develop something new so mm-hmm. i need to first look into the rfc what all standards are say let's say i want to build my own company so i want to uh, build one new router there one new switch so i have mm-hmm. to read all the rfcs like how rfc will say about the uh, switch should be what should be the design how is the working of the switch so i need to re- go through that rfc and then uh, then accordingly we will provide the design okay so this is about the standards we have for the ethernet cable so let's say we have a 10 mbps of cable so then we call it as ethernet cable if we have 100 mbps of cable we call, we call it as fast ethernet cable fast. if we have 1 giga ethernet so we call it giga ethernet cable we have 10 gbps then 10 10 gb gig uh, cable there if you have 100 then 100 gig it just like goes like this but these two are important when we have 10 we call it as ethernet when we have 100 we call it as fast ethernet okay and how much distance this all cable will cover only 100 meter till 100 meter let's say you have router and switch these two should be within the 100 meter distance if it is more than 100 meter so then it will not be you will not get expected traffic or you may be get some packet loss in that case of scenario okay so as per standard if two devices is between this then only we can support it let's say maybe t- today you have some network you build one new network so you have switch and router there and you are observing a traffic packet loss so obviously you go back to your vendor and you will say we are observing a traffic loss so they will ask like how much is the distance between the two you are saying you are, we are using this copper cable and we have distance more than 100 meters so they will simply say it's not as per standard so just make it between 100 meter then we will look into further Okay. okay so this is the thing like we have to make sure it should be within this distance only yeah. okay it's for copper cable we will see if you want if you want more uh, means distance to be covered how which cable we can use here. and these are the standard like 8.2 uh, 802.3 you need to just remember for ethernet we have i u a b and an normally they don't ask this kind of thing in ccna they normally ask distance and what is the name of the 10 mbps 100 mbps and speed but you can still remember it it will be so like it, what is the name of, what is the name of it like, yeah name yeah yeah okay so you just uh, remember it but main thing you need to keep in mind is this distance part and what is the cable type we call it when we have a 10 mbps of uh, port we have 100 mbps of speed we call it as fast ethernet then we have giga ethernet okay mm-hmm. so this is how your cable internal means rj45 if i remove that rj45 so this is something your cable will look like this so there will be multiple cable in between so we will see what's the role of these cable so but on top of it we add add over rj45 so if you remove this rj45 so it will be having this many cables inside mm-hmm. and it will be twisted like this okay so utp cables uh, let's this 10 base t means your ethernet which is 10 mbps and 100 base t which is like your uh, fast ethernet right okay. your 100 mbps so this is like two pairs or four wires cable so means it it is that pairing which we are showing here so it is like something like two pairs only in that case and four wires only here we have eight pairs so it is for the giga ethernet nowadays we normally get giga ethernet only so there we have four pairs or eight wires but if you have four pairs and two pairs so that is only we use for the ethernet and fast ethernet cable so, so i will say like two pairs four wires uh the cable is same but they they only connect uh you know uh four fast ethernet wire no, no means let's say this cable is there na so in this case you can see you have a four pairs right 1 2 3 4 right oh okay Yeah. So in that so case, is... only we have uh, two pairs. Only you will see. 
So in this case, how many pairs are there? Two pairs. Yeah, only two pairs will be there. Total four wires will be there. Okay. Okay. So means that means that cable only support fast Ethernet, Ethernet. Means let's say you you have a port which uh, which support uh, Ethernet and fast Ethernet. So in that mm -hmm. case, you need to connect a cable of this type, like four. This uh, means means you have two pairs and four wires cable. And on top of it, you will have a RJ45 connected on it. Okay. Okay. So let's see what's the role of this cable. So first, we will go with the our this uh, means Ethernet and fast Ethernet cables. So what is the role of Ethernet and fast Ethernet cable? So like I told you, there will be four pairs only. Sorry, four wires and two pairs only. So what was the role of that? So let's say if you have a switch. Sorry, it's uh, your uh, let's say client here. Right, client. it's not a switch; it's a client. Your means you can consider your PC or something there, mm -hmm. and this side you have your switch. So, so just remember from this diagram, like uh, this arrows we have. So this is switch, and this is our client. Okay, so but if if client want to communicate from one, uh, let's say from your this uh, receivers from your uh, this local node towards the switch, so it will communicate only from one and two wire only. Mm -hmm. And if switch want to communicate, it will communicate. It will transmit only from three and six. So that's how we achieve a full duplex. So like three, I told you, at the same uh, time, three, three and, and six. six. Oh, yeah. Okay. So means let like I told you, not so there. Whenever we want to receive uh, or uh, send traffic, uh, mm -hmm. so we uh, we are able to do it at the same time. There will be no collision happen. And why it's not mm -hmm. getting collision because your this device uh, means your client and your switch are sending from different wire and receiving from different wires so that's why you don't get a collision in that case okay but it will be three and six not four five right no no four, not four five three and six it will be standard but you, i will give you more example like how this will be achieved nowadays it's a little different nowadays but uh, traditionally whenever this developed so it is like three and six only will from the switch side it only send and from the client side it only receive and it is like any client device you will bring laptop your pc your mobile phone so your mobile phone don't have cable so like if any device you bring it will have this kind of uh, setup three and six cable will always receive and three and six always transmit from the switch side and one and two always receive from the switch side and one and two always transmit from the client side mm -hmm. okay so this is a setup we have for the fast ethernet and and your ethernet not for the giga ethernet. Standard. Yeah. yeah that's as per standard earlier okay so okay. now let's say you have a router and switch mm -hmm. you have two different now again for router also Three and six will always communicate, and your three and six uh, means three and six always receive, and three and six always transmit for the switch. That is same because switch only transmit through three and six. Like in this case, three and six, okay. it is transmitting, so it is same. So router will receive on three and six and transmit on one and two and receive on one and uh, two on the switch side. And mm -hmm. remember the name of this cable will be straight through. We call it as straight through cable because straight here through. one and two, yeah, here we have single single connection, right? Directly straight connection. One and two receiving. Whenever you want to communicate, for example, router to switch and switch to, uh, let's say your PC or your client. So you need mm -hmm. a straight through cable, correct? Only but, problem yeah. with this cable is, let's say you have a two switch connected directly, right? So if two mm -hmm. switch are connected, so switch are expecting three and six should receive. Both switch will expect three and six, six should receive a traffic, and three and six uh, will send traffic. So in that case, you will not able to. Uh, uh, communicate with each other because both let's say th there we have a switch for example okay i mm -hmm. give an example of the router you can consider a switch also so what happening one and two both sides are transmitting only and the receiver mm -hmm. is three and six for routers so you you will not able to achieve your full duplex communication that is because both are trying to send from same wire and want to want to receive from the same wire from the both the side right so you will not able to in that case we need a crossover cables okay this is an example of a switch also so where you want to send from the three and six from both the side but you are receiving on one and two so you will not not able to achieve the communication mm -hmm. so how you will use you will use a crossover cable so there is a crossover cable also means let's say you go in a lab you want to connect two switches so you will ask for a cross crossover cable you say i need a crossover cable so that you your communication will be achieved in that case so crossover cable is something connected internally like one and two will be connected with three and four three and uh, three and six and four three and six on the other side is connected with one and two so now what happened your transmit will be three and six from there but receive at 
this side of one and two. Now the transmit will be three and six from this side and this is received at one and two on the other side. So this is called crossover cable. And this all thing we are doing just to achieve a full duplex thing. Hmm. Uh, so you understand okay. like so this a crossover is for full duplex. Uh, and no, no, the both is for full duplex. Both, both is for, is full, for duplex. full duplex. Only difference is like if you want to communicate, let's say, between router and switch, for example, mm -hmm. so you need a straight through cable because both are different devices. Right. Correct. If you want to communicate, let's say, switch to switch or router to router, both yeah, are same so then, device. Okay. You need a crossover because, cable. Got it. Because they, they both uh, receive and transmit on the same port. Same so, wire. So they're yeah. the same wire. So if we have a straight cable then uh, there will be a traffic collusion or there will be no no communication of communication yeah right correct okay. okay when you have a same type of devices both end you need to use yeah. the crossover cable when you have a different type of device you need to use a straight through cable okay okay but now uh, this is one example we are here now uh, you remember uh, so just uh, you can remember from this chart like how you need which pin will be transmitter which pin will be receiver yes, accordingly you can select which uh, between two devices which cable you need is it straight through is it a crossover cable you you can select it mm -hmm. okay so like you remember on the first uh, slide on this uh, chapter i showed you that there is a mention as auto mdax mm -hmm. Right. Auto so MDX. what's the meaning? Yeah. So what is the meaning of auto MDX? So nowadays we have a auto MD. If your device is mentioned like auto MD, MDIX cap capable device. So what mm -hmm. happened? It will, let's say you have a switch and switch to communicate and you have a, let's say any type of cable or straight through cable also mm -hmm. there. So now what happened? Your switch now they have this much intelligence. They will adjust their self accordingly. They will not need any more this type of connectivity. Like you need a crossover cable only, then it will be worked there. So if you have auto MDX enabled devices, so it will say, okay, I am auto MDX enabled. So we have a switch connected and you have a straight through cable between them. So it will say, okay, I will now, means one side will say, okay, I will start receiving at one and two. I will start transmitting and, uh, from the one and two and other side will also adjust the three and six port accordingly. So means That's now cool. our devices has this much intelligence they will adjust their port accordingly wow okay but uh, so okay, that's so why like nowadays uh, standard cable uh, that is uh, that you know uh, what we see is straight through cable right mostly people are just they, they yeah means they, nowadays because you yeah. have auto mdx yeah. enable and nowadays i don't think anyone is using this uh, ethernet or fast ethernet port normally we have a giga ethernet and giga. 10 giga ethernet and right so that the, for them it, this thing is not applicable only for ethernet earlier it was uh, only applicable for ethernet and fast ethernet now there there also we have a auto mdx enabled so there also we don't need this thing because now our switches and our devices itself will adjust all this thing just yeah okay so that is the role of auto mdx if it's mentioned it is auto mdx capable so mm -hmm. then you don't need to worry anything but if it is not auto mdx then you need to ver ver verify whether it's a crossover cable or straight through cable or uh, what is the capacity of the port accordingly you need to check how to identify like uh you know uh, like you said nowadays you know most devices are intelligent but uh let's say if i run into a device which is probably like 10 15 years old lab device you know which they did not upgrade it uh and you know there there i have to identify maybe a communication issue so how i will know like the cable uh which kind of cable is like how i will differentiate between straight through and uh crossover cable yeah so for that thing you need to remove this rj45 uh, that uh, adapter there on the top then in that you will see the color coding of all the devices okay okay so there will be a color code particularly for straight through cable and color code for your crossover cable so that there will be one particular color coding so right. i just need to check again that because that nowadays we do rarely use it but I mean, earlier whenever so, but, we gave yeah. the cc yeah uh, yeah you can ask question yes yeah, no, no, i'm mean, just good to know like uh, as a practical you know just you know although it's you know old knowledge but good to have like you never know uh, you know what you you can run into <laughs> so yeah uh, like, uh, there are devices which are like really really old because you know a lot of lot of places uh you know they don't like like to like upgrade in case of research uh you know uh, research that they're doing for last 
10, 10 years, you know, they, uh, they probably have to keep a standard. Uh, so sometimes, you know, that's why I was just curious because I, I, yeah, work in the med- I know medical field, I mean, that's uh, what I'm saying. Biotech. So yeah, okay. they, they, I run into these kind of old devices. Uh, so, you know, I, I, how to like quickly identify if I look at the cable so I can remove it, I can see at the, and then, uh, compare it with the color coding, uh, of, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, straight yeah, or, miss, only yeah. thing is color code. You need to first remove your RJ45 data yeah. adapter on top. Mm-hmm. Then you need to check the color coding. I remember when in 2010 at least we have this thing uh, like uh, many times they ask this thing like, uh, but how is the color code of this device? Or miss, what is the color code of straight to crossover? Uh-huh. They are, then it is very common thing. But nowadays you see all this is coming up as a auto MDX. So okay. and we are not uh, using even the Ethernet and fast Ethernet. We are normally going with the Giga Ethernet thing. And minimum oh, nice. Giga Ethernet, I think nowadays uh, is there. One GBPS is very common nowadays. It is going even beyond like 100, 400, like that. So that's why we and, don't use much of this. And auto MDX, is it like some something like abbreviation uh, written on the back of the devices or it's just like in the manual? No, no, it's on the front, uh, like for Cisco, I will say it's written on the front. Uh, here you can see. Oh. Uh, one minute. So same thing might be like on the laptops or computers. Have, have you like came across those devices where it says auto MDIX or okay. it's just uh, for reserved for the uh, switches or routers? No, no. Let's say you have a router, you have a switch, for example, and you connect it with a laptop, for example. Let's say uh-huh. the laptop don't have that intelligence, but switch has that intelligence. So switch will convert oh. itself accordingly. So switch will convert. Okay. So you, here you can see on the front only, if this is the front side of the uh, your switch, so here on the top, wherever you have your ports, so there you will see on top, you have this many auto ports MDX. written and also auto MDX also written there. Okay. Got it. okay, so like on top, it is only written there, auto MDX. So this I think now it is not on the router or, or router also. Auto for router MDX. also, means for the switch, it is there, it is capable, and router also, it's capable. Uh, router uh, is also show you auto MDX. The device, they normally mention it's if it is auto MDX or not. Okay. okay, so normally they mention that if it is capable of that thing. And nowadays, I think most of them are coming with this. I don't think, at least in our lab, we never go for this thing to check. Earlier, we used to do. But now we normally connect any cable and it's only for your copper cable, which is having only 100 meter of distance. If you go for a fiber cable, so then this concept will not come into picture. We'll go, we'll see how fiber cable will work. But this for only copper cable, this concept will come into picture okay. for full duplex and this uh, thing. So this is your fiber connection. So here you can see, uh, one minute. So here you can see this is your rj45 port which are copper cable connection we normally say mm-hmm. and this is you can see this is your fiber port connection here you can see it's a different design for this one mm-hmm. right so this design and this design that both are different got it okay so this is a connection so means at least from the port if you see you can able to identify which type of cable you need okay, okay. So this is this is actually a router. This is actually a router, not a switch. This is a router, some old router, and it's a back side of the router. So you will see here you have few RJ45, and then most of them you have a fiber connection. Got it. Okay. So this is the connection of the, your. Uh, I mean, this is your power connection of the router. This you don't need to uh, check. Only thing is this port. These are RJ45 mm-hmm. port, and these are your fiber connection. This you will go here. You will connect your fiber cable. So in fiber cable, like there we have RJ45 as a socket. So in a fiber port, you need to use first this SFP. So SFP will be first inserted here. And then in this SFP, you will insert your fiber cable. So fiber cable, something look like this, very thin cable. And this has this many uh, two connections are there. Hmm. Okay, so this is how your fiber cable will look like. Okay. So in fiber cable, one is transmitter, one is receiver. Two ports, like two connections we have. One is transmitter, and, uh, one is receiver. So uh, these uh, SFP, they are, uh, they can only be inserted into the fiber uh, ports, uh, port not, on the, not on the, uh, the, not on the, RJ45. Yeah. No, but, but as you can see the design, yeah. Okay. But I have seen like some SFPs 
or, or maybe I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I've seen something similar to SFP where uh, you know we we inserted that on the uh, Ethernet port, but uh, the other end was uh, you know it was RJ45 port. So we connected the RJ45 cable uh, on the uh, fiber port, but the SFP was different. Like in this case, uh, it is uh, for the uh, fiber. Uh, in in that case, it was same same device, this SFP, but the port was RJ45 port. So I asked them like why uh, they are doing it. They said like because we ran out of some ports, so they they are using those converters. So just to use it. Yeah, in between they have a converter, then, right? but what's happening uh -huh. in that maybe in that case. Uh -huh. They have a means one SFP. SFP will be uh, will have a fiber connection. Then fiber connection may be going towards let's say one switch or any one, one of the device will have. Okay, uh -huh. so switch will now have that connection. Now from that switch you will let's say you have some particular routers you want or your laptop to be get connected. So okay. that there you will get again RJ45 towards your laptop will be get connected. So now in Got that it. case from for that particular device, it can uh -huh. be used by multiple persons so because you have a uh -huh. run out of the port. So that particular yeah. device can be used by single more than one person. So okay. they normally have that thing in a lab, lab kind of scenario, not in a means I will say in a field scenario with the customer, but with a the lab they have because they okay. sometimes we don't have that many number of devices there. Okay. Okay. So there you, but in between you have some other device because if one side this is RJ45 connected with the fiber, so other side also it should be fiber because fiber it is one. like TX and receiver means you can verify also this how which one is TX and which one is receiver. Let's say one side you have a router, you connect this fiber there. Now on the other side, if you see from the other side, you will see from the one of the port you will receive, you are getting the light. From the other side, you will not getting any light there. Hmm. Okay, so if from the side where you receive a light, so you can consider that is your receiver and transmitter for the other side. Hmm. Same way, okay. uh, like this side also, if you are not receiving a light, so it's a receiver from the other side and transmitter for you. That means normally this cable will be look like this. But sometimes, hmm. let's say, because we use this cable very rapidly in our labs, so hmm. somehow this get broke also, right? This hmm. blue part maybe get broke. So it will be hmm. like two separate, means it is just same connection is like this, but it will be like now individual cables, right? Now you need hmm. to identify which one is transmitter for me and which one is receiver for me. So accordingly, you need to check uh, from that light part you can do norm in a very good scenario you don't need this thing but normally in a lab kind of scenario when you have something get broken or you know with the reuse of things it will get uh, impacted there so you can check uh, like if you are receiving a light or let's say you want to troubleshoot also let's say you want to check is your fiber cable is correct or not correct so what you can do you can simply check the light are you receiving the light from any one of the port if it is received so this means this is your receiver and if you have one side it should not be received so this means this is your transmitter if something is going wrong so you will not receive light from any of the port okay and uh, these okay. fibers are like two strand fibers or like uh, the one that you showed me like how, uh, how many cables, uh, like if you go back one page. So th these are like two cables uh, or one cable? No, this is single cable, one cable. Okay, but but there is a this single cable. Uh, looks like a like, little bit separation in between. Yeah, I mean, uh, that is that one. Uh, one is your receiver, one is your transmitter. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, so means it is going inside this particular SFP only one one socket and second socket. So one uh -huh. so these two ports. So one is your receiver, one is your transmitter. Again, you need a full duplex in last, right? So how right. do you receive a full right. duplex? So like this. Got it. And the uh, and the part that is glowing is your receiver part. Means uh, let's say uh -huh. this one side you have connected, right? Uh -huh. So one side you just you don't connect with the device you just check from the other side you will see if light is coming or not let's say for example this you have connected the port you've connected with this port but because of some issue or this port getting error or this fiber having some cut there mm -hmm. or some problem with that fiber so, so uh, because this fiber normally cover let's say 300 kilometers of distance also it can cover up to 100 kilometers of distance also so mm -hmm. normally you can't trace it back in a field kind of scenario so what we normally do in a field because these are normally underground cables right mm -hmm. so what we do we just simply check if it is connected from the one side and we just simply check from the other side are we receiving a light or not if you are receiving a light from the one of the ports so this means my fiber is through it is all okay it's so all i okay. just uh, yeah it you just connect it back to here 
because it's very difficult to trace where it is connected yeah, if it, is it okay or not connected uh not okay that cable so you can just simply do that lighting thing in a lab also you can practice this thing I means you can keep one side connected and other side you can hold it on on your hand and then you can see you will receive a light from one of the port so that is your receiver because other is transmitting from that light and one one side where you not receive a light this means that is your transmitter and receiver for the other side got it but uh but are there like uh, for rj45 uh, there are link runners uh, to check you know the cable for fiber we don't we don't do that kind of check uh, like i i use a device called link runner so usually what what it tells me is like uh, the length of the uh, rj45 cable and uh, also tells me like if the cable is good or bad uh, you know or uh, that kind of uh, maybe it is some external tool in in your organization they are using because that tool maybe tell you about the information uh, about right. that link connection so yeah, that is right. like for means it depend if you have such tool will support this thing or not that i'm not okay. sure but physically i'm telling you how we can verify so this is troubleshooting fiber. like uh, because like you said so fiber like you said uh, because it's fiber so it can cover more distance so it's yeah. difficult sometimes to you know trace uh, yeah because the uh, underground most of the yeah, time fiber we do people. underground yeah underground. so field engineer will do troubleshoot like this only in a, in a field because okay. they how they will trace this thing so they will yeah. troubleshoot like this only okay so this like internally fiber will be look like this they have a I means they have small one it's a glass core there it's a cladding then outside to protect all this fiber information then you have buffer and then outer jacket so it it is obviously not it's like how it, they are designing this fiber there so that the uh, the, uh, the picture that should sh you showed me yellow one it just looks yeah, like so this internally so, yeah internally oh. it was something okay. like this if you if you let's say you remove that uh, top port from here now mm -hmm. you will see mm -hmm. very thin kind of cable is coming out of this Nice. very thin cable is coming out of this so this is like why but that is very effective cable as compared to your copper cable so because mm -hmm. that is created like this they have a fiber glass on top of it so that your because all the traffic which we are sending now if we say packet we are sending packet we are receiving this all will be in the format of light only means your normal bits or lighting is going from one side to the other side but to protect that light it should not get uh, you i will say uh, your traffic will not get any error or get uh, inside get corrupted so you this type of connective uh, protection we have on fiber cable okay so this is uh, normally they don't ask this type of thing this is just for a knowledge purpose uh, like uh, i will say because ccn is more a uh, multiple uh, choice kind of question or paper either if it is something like a subjective paper then maybe they ask such thing but they normally ask just for know, know, like you know curiosity like uh, you know what is the different how it looks like i mean outside i have seen like i have done cabling myself so i've connected fiber uh, a lot of time that's why I know about the SFTs, but I, I never hmm. knew like this is how actually inside it looks like and it's uh, these kind of uh, yeah means this there. is very effective kind of cables actually as compared to you can say uh, RJ45 so that's why it cover a more uh, distance nice. I means internally they're saying how the working of this cables I means you will receive a light from the one side so it will uh, go means if it's a single mode means fiber also is a kind of uh, two types of fiber single mode and multi mode so there will oh. be this kind of angle reflection angle it create and then it will go out, like normal physics we do so in that case also in this case there will their reflection angle is very small so it is like kind, kind of a straight line it going for the uh, single mode so that's why it's cover more distance also I means uh, if, if i show you the distance part so you can see here you have like fiber which cover five kilometers 550 meters wow. so like this many long distance also cover. but copper cable can only cover 100 meter only 100 meters, so that's yeah. why okay. yeah in a field kind of network when we have a connecting let's say two routers or router mm -hmm. with a switch so we normally use a fiber cables because that can cover more distance for us more distance and then in that also if you need like up to 30 kilometers it's like single mode uh and yeah it's, single it's, mode and yeah. means it's according to your sfp actually like which type of sfp yeah. you're using so yeah. sfp has some types there lr er sr so that's mm -hmm. type there how much is that can support now even 
many more like 400 gb kind of sfps are also coming quad kind of sfp is also coming so yeah. there it can support more things but you can for now they have this kind of sfps which we can uh, use to cover the distance right so this means like in copper cable we have rj45 in this we have a your sfp so sfp is the main key which will uh, connect your cable and it will decide decide which how much speed it will support and how much distance you can cover and sfps are from cisco as well as uh, i have seen dell sfps yeah cisco, sfp uh, yeah means it is like coming from many vendors create the yeah, sfp okay. so, yeah so but it is like let's say uh, normally what happened uh, but i uh, face problem is like let's say you have a cisco device for example mm. now you're using the dell sfp but cisco yeah. will say okay our device is all good it's problem yeah. with the dell that's, sfp go that's and the check same it. scenario we had so we had to buy yeah. extra ones and same, cisco were yeah. a little expensive uh dell ones okay. were because we used to buy servers from dell but we were they, were they are still buying so dell used to send us uh sfps you know just extra uh i mean they used to charge us but uh, cost was Very a little less. bit less than the Cisco ones. The Cisco ones were expensive, uh, like yeah. Yeah. So, but normally we face a scenario like whenever you have an issue, so they normally come up with like this thing only check okay. once with the Cisco SFP and test this thing. Got it. Oh. So this uh, the thing hmm. for the SFP, and now we have a difference like why we use UTP and why we use the fiber optics. So it means if you have some home kind of network, so UTP is fine for you because look is uh, means easier, cheaper as compared to the fiber cable. UTP is uh, but if you have uh, sorry, UTP copper I, cable. A copper cable. UTP so like copper cable. Ah, uh, it's a I think you need one minute. I also need to check. Uh, because I think did we. Uh, one minute UTP cables. I think UTP cables. Oh, I didn't mention. Okay, I didn't mention that. I need to check that part. What is the UTP okay. cable mean? But we okay. for this copper cable only we call it as UTP. We call cables. it UTP. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this copper. Somebody is saying copper cable or UTP cable. Same. UTP Normally cable we use copper cable. Yeah, standard may be saying it's a copper cable. So, but uh, when we normally use, we say it as a copper cables only. Copper. I mean, okay. So here you can see that if you have a longer distance, so then you will cover with the uh, means fiber cable. If you have a smaller distance, then you can cover with the UTP cable. Like I told you, if it's in a home land net kind of network, you can okay with the UTP. UTP. But if it's very big network, then you need a fiber. Hmm. So now it's a, like I told you in fiber, we have a lot more protection there. Mm -hmm. So it's not very really vulnerable with the EMI. So sometimes issue will be like there's some electromagnetic wave there or something. You can say some microwave nearby area or some towers are nearby area. So it will also impact your traffic. Oh. So in that case, your fiber will be more effective or as compared to your EMI. Oh, sorry, your oh. copper cables. Okay. Then RJ45 port used with the UTP and you have a SFP ports in a case of your uh, fiber optics. Again, SFP is little costlier as compared to RJ45. Okay. Okay. So emit a faint signal out. So means we norm, uh, this we can't test, but we normally consider there will be some leakage. Or I told you, you know, there will be in a form of light. Your all the traffic is going out. So we yeah. consider in case of copper, there can be some loss of the your traffic. We can say, or you can say, some traffic will get corrupted in case of okay. UTP cables. But in yeah. this case of fiber optics, there will be no such risk actually. Okay. So that is the main uh, thing about the, these two. So we have some quiz. So let's try uh, for the, I think five, maybe we have a question. So we just try just, it will give you more revision. Then you can also go through once again about this. Mm -hmm. So let's say you connected two routers together with a UTP cable. However, data is not successfully sent and received between them, but could be the problem. So means there are two routers, <coughs> there are two routers which are uh, with the UTP cable. They didn't ma mention anything uh, particular, like it's a auto MDX enable or not, but it's saying only it need to send a uh, data from successfully, not able to send a successfully between the two routers. So they are connected with a straight through cable. They're connected with crossover cable. They're operating in auto MDX mode. I think the A. 
Yeah, it is going to be the straight through cable. Okay. That's why it's not able to work. So we need a crossover cable in case crossover. of. Two, okay. Because they mentioned old routers, so probably like may maybe it do yeah. not have auto MDX. Call. Auto MDX. So yeah, means if they didn't mention something like auto MDX enable, so mm -hmm. we consider normally like this. And obviously they oh. didn't give that option also like auto MDX is working. Right. Okay. The operating in. Okay, so your company wants to connect switches in two separate building that are about 150 meter apart they want to keep cost down if possible what kind of cable should we use utp single mode fiber or multi mode fiber? Mul you have a multi -mode? Sensor? yeah correct multi -mode. correct because it is yeah, UTP UTP will be like hard. yeah so it will not support now multi mode is little cheaper as compared to single mode so they mention about the cost also so that's why so we even if we do some kind of uh uh, so, like, uh, if we can, uh, let's say, if I have to use UTP for a little bit over 100 meters, so uh, the single, it will be the single cable, which is uh, 100 meters, or even if I, let's say, uh, if I do some uh, connections in between, let's say, if I, uh, if I put, um, uh, you know, a device in between and then use another cable from that device to be, uh, then also I can yeah, then it will work then it will okay. work because you are saying let's say there's one router in between your uh -huh. switch and then again yeah. you have a router yes. right so you will connect your cable from router to switch so that is 100 meter then from 100 meter from switch to other router again you have different cables so it's again 100 meter so there okay. it will be okay because it's like connection you are doing multiple connection you are doing but in a one but go it's, it's one not go. possible and and then because a lot of times the buildings are you know even like if a single building but floor is like five or six floors down so that cable uh you know 100 meter cable will be difficult to you know uh it may be more than 100 meter distance so utp will be uh not feasible or suitable for yeah that in that case thing. yeah okay. correct so maybe just we need to take care of the distance part distance if it is less than 100 then utp is effective because it's cost effective mm -hmm. but uh, if it is more than 100 then we need to go for a multi-mode and single mode multi -mode. okay okay now your company want to connect two offices which is about three kilometers apart they want to keep cost on if possible which kind of cable they have okay i think we didn't check the chart of that uh, this one Where no i think it? it's uh there were, you mentioned it uh Three, uh, we covered that chart like three meters. Uh, what is the distance yeah. we cover? 30 yeah, kilometers. Like five kilometers. Remember, five kilometers. Single mode always have more distance. Just remember more this distance. thing. Okay. Yeah. Means that one have only uh, means some distance like uh, meters only. Uh, if any distance come in a kilometer, so it always a single mode. Okay, Sing, okay. Always like to be on the safer side, always go for single mode Sing, means single mode. mode means like if they mm -hmm. because they are saying cost effective also so yeah. because it is kilometers so we always go for single mode. but let's say if it is something like 550 meters or something Meter. like that okay. so then yeah. it will we can go for multi-mode also because multi it's a cost effective as compared to the single mode mm -hmm. now we have a switch of the folding indication here we have the switch what ha would happen if we connect it to the identical switch with a straight through cable they will operate normally they will operate in a reduced speed they will op not, are not able to communicate unable to communicate they this will operate the, normally yeah I, because it is mentioned it's a auto mdx, auto MDX. Okay. yeah so there we will be it will be okay for us hmm. then we have a last it's like your company needs to connect many end hosts to a switch which is wiring cabinet on the same office or floor as the host what kind of cable they use as you have a same floor now you want to connect uh, many end host with a switch which is then, in a in a wiring cabinet so which kind of cable UTP. we use utp i think yeah correct because it's the same floor so we are considering they didn't de define that distance but we are considering it's a same floor and it's a switch so we will use a utp cable here because normally switch have a multiple host with a that rj45 cable connection only okay. like 24 port which i showed you it's mostly a or the or the 45 very rarely on a switch you will get these many number of fiber uh, connection okay but nowadays means new switch which we are coming right now because i told you know nowadays how the setup is going on is like they are obsoleting the switches l2 switches they're only keeping l3 switch or routers directly so now oh. they're coming up with this kind of setups uh, sure. because as per the network design it is going like that but uh, if it is if they didn't mention anything like such so we are considering it's a utp cable 
Okay. So is it like uh, industry standard that they are eliminating the L2 switches and directly using? Uh, no, there's no standard, just a network planning, you can say they have this kind of because now transmission also coming up with the devices which is supporting the VLANs, they can mm -hmm. also do the aggregation. So why they will do a two two times or two devices in the same aggregation right. layer? Right. So they don't need that part, trunk port, all these things they don't need because transmission has their devices which are supporting this thing. So they are thinking that can be a more cheaper way to go with the network planning. Eliminating like one one extra layer, uh, you know, uh, and some device also, and maybe cost. Yeah, means it is something yeah. like uh, your router will have direct connection with your transmission device, and then transmission will have their own muxes and all that connection will be there. So instead of uh, coming like router to switch and then switch again, go to the transmission device. So that is not a cost effective or right network planning because we are just adding one more device, and that is only making a. Uh, sorry. Network, uh, what is a transmission device like uh, when you say transmission? Uh, you can device. say it's a MUX, uh, you know, that MUXes are there. It's transmission, is just, there is nothing. Let's say there is one hardware. So what's the role of that hardware is, let's say, you see any uh, traffic. It's, you can consider it as a, normally as an L2 or L1 device only. And we call okay. it as MUX there. So it will just receive your traffic and in uh, from the your uh, router. It will check your VLAN tagging, what all tagging it has. And it will just send the traffic out in the form of signal, your light signals there. So it will just Do receive your traffic. Do you have an example like photo or something for that? Mux. Uh, means, uh, Mux, uh, that's what now, nowadays that also very rarely you get. Mux, you can oh. say if you search online, Siana Mux or Tejas Mux like that, oh. you will see, uh, you will get some of the diagram. This Cisco Juniper, they don't create such kind of devices. They are like last mile devices, we normally say. These devices you normally don't get from the Cisco Juniper or these all router vendors. Now, even those uh, you will see Siana as a Mux or ECI as a Mux, you will search. You will see that hardware is there, but that hardware role is nothing. They just receive a traffic. It will just send send it out in the form of uh, signaling. They they don't add any information in that. It's M M U K S Mux. M U M U X Mux there. for Siana, or you can search E C I something. These are big tagers also there. These are some company which create these kind of devices. Mux so, oh yeah, just, I've seen that it's. Uh... Uh, pretty big, uh, yeah. I saw the okay. Okay, so these I mean, these devices nothing like work something extraordinary there or any value they will add. It just simply receive uh, the traffic. It will just check. Uh, now they have earlier they don't even have this capability like to check the VLANs or anything. Now they have. Uh, that's why we use a switch earlier. Now they don't have this kind of thing. Now they have added this uh, thing there. So. Th they now can do the VLAN tag and then they can just simply send the traffic from that side. And it's it. again a GUI platform. I don't think that have a, some CLI there, but it's again a GUI platform, which I saw with the teams who are working on this side. Got it. 